Well, what is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we have got a pretty interesting video. What we're going to be doing is pulling the sand point on the end of our well. And we'll get into more of what that even means at the end of this video. This is something that we have to do about every four or five years. And um, it's been getting worse and worse over the last year like it always does. So it is time to get it done. I need to get this part of the fence taken down because we're gonna back our tractor in here. Cause right underneath this cover right here, our well is right down in there. And at the end of this video, I'm going to explain to you guys how our whole well works and all of that. Just we'll talk more about that at the end. I'm not gonna do this. That in the beginning of the video, what we're going to be doing to get the well pipe out of the ground is using this boom pole. And as you can see, it's got that hook and then it hooks on on the three point of the tractor. So if you ask me, I really don't think that that's going to pull the pipe out of the ground. If you look at it, it's just really not that strong. And um, yeah, I would not be surprised at all if it bends over or whatever. I really think it's going to, so we'll see. That is option A. The next option is going to be using this right here. And this is a carryall. And it goes on the three point of the tractor too. It's much heavier. And I really think that that will pull it out of the ground. We're not gonna have to worry about that bending or anything at all like that. The last time that we replaced on the sand point, what we did to get it out of the ground was take two car jacks and uh, put pipe wrenches on the pipe and then was able to use that to jack it up. It was a mess, it took a long time. That was a very long day. And what we're gonna try and do this time is obviously use the tractor. We've used the tractor in the past and it will not do it. Um, we've used the front end loader. So we're going to try and use the three point this time and see if that works. Hopefully a pretty interesting video. Now I'm gonna work on getting this fence taken down. Alright guys, it is now the next day, and as you can see, Dad already got that cover off to look down into the well room, so we got some water containers filled up down there, and we're going to be getting the boom pole on our tractor. I think he wants to put a couple pieces of plywood down just to help save some of the grass and keep the tractor from sinking in so bad. So we just got some things to get set up here, and then we'll get started. And all this plywood sitting right over here that you guys saw me put there last week in that tight spot, because I said it needs to be out of the way because we're not going to use it anymore. Yeah, we need it. Imagine that, right? So, it's been back there for what? One day, two days now, as I'm recording this. And we need it back out of there, so. I didn't think about that, and I didn't realize that Dad wanted to use the plywood for this. So would though. Why not? Let me pull forward. Alright. Slide just this way. And Sounds all good. of it actually needs to be slid. Alright. Alright guys, now we're down in the basement taking um, the well apart. Obviously we've got to get the pump out of there and the filter. Just get everything taken apart so we can pull the well pipe out of the ground. And um, for all the shots down here in the basement, the sound isn't going to be very good because I had my second camera down here. Um, I didn't have my GoPro down there just because I didn't want it to get damaged. So it was in a waterproof case. You can't hear very well and that just is what it is. We had to get um, obviously this junction taken apart right here. It was on there very tight. We really struggled to get this off. Yes. 
This was our first attempt at trying to pull the pipe out of the ground. As you can see, we did not have the chain hooked up right at all. And, uh, something we really struggled with. This is the danger with working with chains. You can see we had a lot of tension on this chain, and it came flying off of there. If that would have hit someone, it definitely would not have been good, and that's why whenever you have a lot of tension on a chain, you always want to stay as far away from it as you possibly can just to be safe. Alright guys, I'm not going to lie, this is kind of where things get a little bit sketchy, and I'm sure that there's going to be some people that don't like what happens here. In this part of the video, we went about it as safe as we possibly could, and uh, nobody really got hurt. So what we finally ended up doing is putting a pipe wrench around the pipe, as you can see right here, and that way the chain will have something to grab onto, and there's less risk of the chain um, popping off. So after we got it set up like that, we didn't really have any more problems with the chain popping off. Her dad lifted up on three-point lever, and nothing happened. The pipe did not come out of the ground at all. Nothing moved. So we had as much pressure as we could really put on that pipe using the tractor. Nothing happened. So what we decided to do is get this long pipe that you guys see right here, and me and Dad use it as a big lever. And that did work, as you can see here, it comes out of the ground a little bit. And we got it out of the ground maybe, I don't know, like six inches or something. And then all of a sudden, the boom pole decides that it's going to get out, as you can see right here, and it just completely crumbles. To be honest, I'm kind of surprised that it didn't happen sooner. Me and Dad, I think both, were uh, surprised that it lasted for as long as we did, like I said in the beginning of the video. Um, we were pretty confident that this is what was going to happen. Not surprising, but um, it definitely could have been bad. Definitely glad that nobody was underneath that or over it or anything like that. So now we went and got the carryall and um, we put it on the back of the tractor. Got everything hooked back up the right way. Um, struggled a little bit more with getting the chain to grab on there the right way. But um, once we finally did, we very, very quickly realized that the carryall was not going to work how we thought it was going to. Um, the problem is the way that this carry all hooks up to the back of our tractor you can't lift it up very high at all right now the way that it's sitting it is all the way up and obviously that's not going to work very good because um, the concrete slab is so much higher so this we realized was not going to work um, pretty quickly after getting everything set back up we tried lots of different things and then did a lot of talking to figure out what to do next and this is what we came up with what we did is we went and picked up a hay bale and put that on the carryall so we don't have to worry about the tractor coming off the ground. Then we put a chain back around the pipe, hooked it to the front end loader on our tractor and started lifting up on that. Had it all the way up, it still didn't move, so me and Dad got back on there with the lever and as you can see, very, very slowly um, it begins to come out of the ground. One thing I guess I can mention is that all of the shots of the pipe coming out of the ground are actually double the speed, so I sped them up while I was at it um, two or three times. That just kind of shows how slow it was coming out of the ground. And now what we're doing is simply just using pipe wrenches around the pipe to uh, pull it out the rest of the way. Here's just a little look at the standpoint of what we were um, replacing. Obviously, we had to get it um, unscrewed and taken off. And I'm sure that you guys are wondering, well, what happened to you guys getting the pipe out and laying it down on the ground? Yeah, as you can see, there is water on the lens of the camera. I have my camera with a waterproof case out there, and I put my GoPro in the house just because it began to 
ice and rain pretty heavily. So I did not want to have my GoPro out in any of that weather. So unfortunately, you guys missed us laying the pipe down and standing it back up. As you can see right here, this is um, us just kind of rinsing the pipe out, getting some of the iron off of the pipe that builds up over time around there. We used um, a little pressure washer and blew a lot of it out. As you can see, this is some pretty nasty stuff coming out of the pipe, and uh, pretty much what happens is it builds up over time, and then, you know, using pressure, it comes out of there and looks pretty bad. Now we're just putting some plumber's tape around um, the new sand point and getting it screwed onto the pipe. Now we've got the well pipe back down in the ground. Um, we screw this extra piece on the pipe so that obviously we don't damage the threads whenever we drive it back down on the ground. And uh, I've got my camera back out there. Apparently the microphone wasn't hooked up or something because the wind was just pretty bad. But um, anyways, now we're gonna get it um, driven back down to the ground. The rest of the way. Oh! Somehow that little piece of PVC pipe um, came off. It didn't break, the 90 just came off of there, so we had to get some more um, pipe glue and get it put back together. Now Dad is getting the check valve and screwing it back down tight. And then it's time to bring the pump back in there and get it put back on. Now we are priming the pump just to get all the air out of the system. This is the water that was coming out of there. Obviously, we did not want that going into the house, so um, we had the valve turned off to the house and um, had the water running right out to this hose to get it all flushed out till it was nice and clear. All right, guys, it's about a week later now. The well's been working just fine. Haven't had any problems with that. This is the well room. I don't even think I showed you any of this. Um, so obviously, that's the well pipe right down there, the pump. Then we've got this big filter right here. Water comes down and around up to here. We've got another little filter and the water goes into the water softener and then it goes out to the house. Um, this right here is the underside of the cover so obviously this is where the chain was coming down hooked up to the pipe. Pretty simple. And our well is a pretty shallow well. It's about 25 feet. That's how long um, the well pipe itself actually is. And the reason it was so hard for us to pull it out this time is because uh, on the end of this sand point, as you guys can hopefully see right here, it's got this big I don't even know what it's called, but there's this big um, piece of metal that sticks out, I'm going to say at least a half inch, and it's that much bigger than the pipe itself, so whenever you're pulling this out of the ground, you're not just pulling the pipe out, you're pulling all the sand that's packed around this pipe. You've got to get that to break loose so that you can pull this out of the ground, and um, the new sand point that we put in does not have this big thing. It's just nice and smooth going all the way down but you've still got these junctions right here where the two pipes connect because obviously that's not just one long pipe it is several um, pieces of pipe I believe they're like five foot sections and then they're put together with these with these junctions so there's still this lip right here and you know all the sand that's packed around this spot has to get broke loose for it to come out of the ground that's why it was so hard to get this one out of the ground um, and you can see here this sand point is completely clogged up um, right here right above my finger, that's an open one. But the majority of them are clogged up, these little holes, and obviously that's what lets the water in, and that filter keeps the sand from um, getting sucked up here. 
well. So the new one had bigger screens and um, I don't really know why we use this style instead of the other one. I don't know why we did this one. I think it's because dad could not find the other style. So we just had to go with this one. What happens is if someone is in the shower and then another person like let's say flushes the toilet or something, we will lose water because obviously, you know, your pump builds a certain amount of pressure and then it kicks off. And then whenever this needle drops below um, a certain amount, the pump kicks back on and pumps it back up. Well, if this needle gets below, I think it's like 10 PSI or something. The pump automatically kicks off so that it doesn't, so that it doesn't burn your pump off. Because if for some reason you were to lose prime, then, and you wouldn't have it set to where it kicks off, then your pump would just run and burn up if you didn't catch it. So that's the reason that um, we had to replace it. The pump just simply could not keep up. We had very, very poor water pressure. So I think that's going to wrap this video up, guys. Um, not the best footage. It's really just kind of hard to shoot video down here in tight quarters, you know, wet area. And um, it was a pretty cold day, so really just wasn't the best conditions to be filming. But um, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like always, any questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll get back with you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next week.